the thing with entrepreneurship is we all saw what happened a couple of years ago, you know, with the scamdemic where they said, wear this phase diaper, stand on this dot. Oh, by the way, it's time for you to take our experimental uh, jab. We're not sure if it's going to work, but we're pretty sure it's safe and effective, you know, three months into building this thing out. And I had a lot of people at that time that were like, look, man, I've been watching your stuff. I understand your views and your take. I'm, I'm in the same, you know, camp as you. But if I don't take this thing, I'm going to lose my job and I have a mortgage to pay and, you know, like a wife and children to take care of in my house. So what do I do? And the vast majority of these guys that didn't have options that were a slave to the corporate grind, it didn't matter if it was C-suite jobs. It didn't matter if it was a licensed professional that was working in a hospital in an accounting firm in a financial instrument type of office type thing. It didn't matter any of those things. If the mandate existed and it came down from corporate, down the ladder, you know, sort of thing, then you had to do it. You could have been making, you know, five, six hundred thousand dollars a year, making great money for a company. And then all of a sudden they said, oh, by the way, you need to do this. OK, and that's not something that exists in the realm of entrepreneurship. You don't have that obligation, you know. Um, in fact, a lot of friends of mine that run companies, they didn't even mandate anything because it was just a recommendation. And it's only like these large corps that and they're in bed with the government. OK, I mean, I've talked before about my lobbying efforts and the collusion between uh, government, financial institutions and how they work together very clearly to their interests. You know, a lot of people think, oh, the government's all there to take care of us and look after us and all of those things. And it's like dive a little deeper down the rabbit hole, my friend. There is something to learn there. There's a lot more going on than what you think. So back to the notion of the entrepreneurship, you have that flexible flexibility and freedom. Let me tell you a story about my buddy, Adrian. So he was living in Ottawa a few years ago when this thing kicked off and he had a facility in uh, the States and his partner worked down there and he worked up in uh, Canada. They, you know, they met up, uh, you know, once a month and did their thing. And then he started seeing what was happening with mandates, standing on dots, wearing face diapers. And then what was coming over the horizon after that, which was going to be take our experimental uh, Jabba juice. And he said, you know what? I'm out. He sold everything. He had a location independent business that he could run from anywhere in the world that didn't rely on a storefront, an op a neon open sign or any of that, any of those things. Packed his bags, sold his G-Wagon, sold his condo, took his girlfriend, dogs. They went down south and they started investing in Mexican real estate. They've been doing quite well. Um, when you have your life structured in such a way that you don't have to become an obedient, compliant, hey, jump, okay, master, how high, right? When you've got your life structured in such a way where you've got mobility and you've got freedom to maneuver and you can act on it, that's something to be said. And you can make a lot of money too. Um, there's no, I mean, I don't like to emphasize the notion of get rich quick, but there's no more rapid path route to financial success and growth than entrepreneurship. I think I still have it down here, actually. Yeah, I do. It was, um, what's the date on this? So this is January 19th, 2009. And I incorporated my business, the debt relief business that I started up in the early 2000s, uh, five years before this. And this wasn't the first time that we got recognized for hypergrowth, right? So, you, I mean, it's going to be hard for you to see the date on that. But you can see this is the business section of the Toronto Star. And that's me over there. And the headline is Saving People Drowning in a Sea of Debt. That was in our old office in um, Markham. And that was the third time that the company got awarded for hypergrowth, which meant we were doing over 100% growth year over year. So without emphasizing too much the rapid path to making a lot of money and generating a lot of receivables and sales receipts, and if you set it up correctly, profit as well, without banging on that drum too much, it's part and parcel of the process, right? If you, if you set up the foundation correctly, you can build rapidly on top of that. And I wasn't even the fastest growing company. Like 
I think on the profit uh, 50, I was somewhere in the middle. On the 150, I was like two thirds of the way up. So there was a lot of other companies that were growing way faster than I was in the same time frame because it's all based on time frame, right? Then they and they validate it with um, your audited uh, books, um, your reconciled books, you know, from the year before. So it's accurate. Um, they're all private companies, so they don't publish uh, profits. But what they were publishing was the uh, sales receipts. So. Yeah. Is it a rapid path? It is. Absolutely. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.